Film Aid started out showing films in refugee camps, uh, informational films, entertaining films. Slowly they started to make informational films themselves, and then they started what's become their major reason for being, which is to train refugees, to tell their own stories, to work as journalists. These are some of the most motivated young people in, in the camp and in the settlement. They'd been through the primary school and the secondary school, and they stayed in school, and then um, went to the film aid, basically graduate program, to learn film production skills. So we partnered with Film Aid. I brought eight undergraduates and two TAs and myself. And the goal was to make a series of short informational films about a new settlement, the Calabaye Settlement, uh, which is very close to the refugee camp. And they only had 10 days to do it. So I was making the water, sanitation, and hygiene video. And it was a film that was going to introduce new refugees coming into the Calabay settlement, uh, how to access water, maintain proper hygiene, and where to, where to get all the equipment they need, for example, to set up their toilets or to bathe. I say, yal, tamme dera sabi kasolo molabis, pogo. Yal dero hama, be saba dero shayo, seilan tabi mashi fe hama tabi shilu moya fe be seila. Our crew, we sort of divided roles where we had a cinematographer who was the, the person who was controlling the camera for most of the shoots. We had someone who was in charge of recording sound and that alternated between uh, Maddie and Atim, who was one of the film aid alumni we worked with. And then there was the director, which was me and another, another one of the alumni. I think it, it was no different than working with students at Penn who are also my peers. And I think that's something people tend to assume is not possible because you, you assume like, oh, but they haven't had the same schooling and they haven't had the same education. But really they're just as smart, if not smarter than, <laughs> than I was there. And they, they knew a lot more about filmmaking in many ways than, I, than even I did. And I have um, some film experience. So our team interviewed uh, NGOs such as the Red Cross, the Red Cross Tracing Unit, which works to connect refugees to their um, long lost family members, as well as the Handicap International NGO. And then for education, we interviewed the primary school system and the uh, secondary school system. In addition, we uh, were able to talk to a student, a Thotomoy, who is in secondary school, and we followed her uh, journey to school and asked her questions about life in the camp and what her goal Sorry, and that was a really great moment. I didn't dream that I will continue learning anymore because there was no high school in Calabria. There were no parents to take me to boarding school. Our films are going to be shown to new arrivals to Calabay and the idea that young girls that would be arriving will see this film and see her speaking about how important it is for women to have an education felt incredibly important and having the alumni there to help facilitate that was really critical to what our documentary was going to say. So in addition to the short uh, informational videos we made, um, we also brought 360 degree virtual reality cameras and this was also another big part of the project as I had envisioned it, which was to recreate spaces within the camp using 360 video and VR. I knew as soon as I told students that we were going to a refugee camp, uh, people had very different kinds of ideas about what they might find, uh, and some people just couldn't picture it at all. And I think even people who have seen images of refugee camps, they're used to the, uh, the same kinds of images. And they reinforce a lot of the um, preconceptions you might have about what's going on there. It looks like they're under-resourced and they're just too many kids in a space and you wonder how they could learn anything in that kind of environment. But when you look at the 360 video, it's a different space. It's actually filled with joy and everyone, the students are really working together and I've seen just people look at it, the, the rough footage we've shot and uh, their faces light up. It kind of comes alive for them and you get a sense of what it's like to be there, not just to see my impressions of what it was like to be there.
the term refugee and labeling someone a refugee is a little unfair because they're all people and they all have lives and backgrounds and just simply the word refugee doesn't even begin to describe who they are. It's nice to make those connections and I feel the documentaries that we made will help to humanize the people that are in Kakuma and show people that obviously there's poverty and there's sadness in these camps, but there's another side to it. I wish that every refugee would know that they are worthy. They are worthy to be treated right. They are worthy of human rights. And if anyone may try to curtail that in one way or another, they, they will stand up for themselves. Being a refugee is not the end of the world. You can still achieve your dreams. You can still live a full life and be able to enjoy. The experience of making the films alongside the refugee team members was as valuable to, uh, I feel, the goal of social change as the, the end product. I feel that the kind of cooperation and work we did is emblematic of the global and international um, cooperation that we need to end the refugee crisis, hopefully, and come to the table to create conversations and solutions to these problems because there's so many different aspects, there's so many different stakeholders, but working together as we did in Kakuma and Calabay to make these films is how we're going to solve these issues.